Alright, welcome back to uh, the second hour of Once Upon a Game, episode 13, uh, where uh, myself, Nick, Robert, and Paul uh, were playing Fall of Magic. Um, we just finished up some scenes in Barleytown. So, um, I think it's uh, Livington, you just went, but I went. I think anybody can go. Yeah. Um, I think we left off at Nick, but... Uh, well, I went and then you went. Or I went and then went, you went. Uh, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I'll, well, okay. Go, go ahead. No, I'll see to you. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I'm actually going to move the Magus. Okay. If everyone's okay with that. Uh, to Stormguard Mountains. Oh, well, okay. Making yeah. sure... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, let me look. Um, so I think, like, we come in on, like, the wagon getting into the pass. And, um, like, it's it's clear right now. Um, but, like, we're all kind of bundled up. We've kind of fastened down everything on the wagon because, like, just the clouds that are coming in are just thick and you like a, a blizzard is coming and um like everyone like the I think the Magus even has kind of as as we left Barleytown, like there was still kind of the the jovial kind of nature. I mean when we left there was a kind of big um, I want to say hoopla, um, and but as we've gotten closer and closer to this pass, you know, we've been bundling up, we've been making sure everything's secure, and there's just kind of this. The you you can see that the Magus isn't worried, but he is. Um, He's focused, like he's he's kind of he, his eyes are kind of looking out at the storm, and you can just see him kind of like um, anticipating what's to come. Yeah. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna use scouting ahead. Unless someone else wants to do something. Go for it. Uh, let's go scouting ahead. So I'm going to roll a d6. Six. Sunbreak. Okay. Um, so we are... The party is currently um, deep in, in sort of like a mountain pass of... Um, of the Stormguard Mountains, and it's just nothing bit, it's been nothing but howling, uh, like blizzard like conditions at this, this high altitude, even though it's like midsummer. Um, and we're all bundled up in, in Barley Town winter gear, um, that was procured by, um, by Piccolo. Actually, I think Piccolo's with me, scouting ahead. Mm -hmm. Um, is there anything, uh, slightly weird about how you behave around like inclement weather um i think that uh let me think i think that he has been like you can't tell that he's cold okay sure okay like, yeah so so you're not wrapped up as much as say uh fawn is right right yeah, and I don't think if you can tell if there's some sort of, like, magical thing, or if it's yeah. literally his just, like... Training. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, I'm, like, howling to, to pick... I, I think Piccolo is, is way, maybe, like, ten or, or so a feet ahead of me. Um, I'm, I'm having a trouble, uh, like, a troubled time trying to step through with the, the fresh snow and keep up. Meanwhile, um, Piccolo is able to guide much much faster than I am 
Um, so I keep crawling, uh, calling out to, to Piccolo, like, wait up! Wait up, you're going too fast! I'm, I'm going to lose you at that pace. You know, I'm like screaming it like over, over the howling of the winds. Right, and I, th I think you hear a yell back, but you can't quite make it out, like... Like it's kind of like Piccolo's responding, but you can't hear what he's saying. Yeah, because you're you're speaking against the wind. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What? Yeah, and I think he's kind of out of sight at this point. Yeah, and you're you're just like becoming more of like a silhouette of a shadow, and I'm like I can't see you. Like what, Piccolo? Piccolo? And I keep like wandering, um, and perhaps uh. Perhaps we do get separated, mm -hmm. but um, I wind up in a place where the the storm sort of um, softens, right. and and it um, it ameliorates, and and all of a sudden it's like it's like the eye of a storm, right? Right. Like there's like it's like just a a small little hole in 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 the sky up here, um, like way way on like near a peak of a mountain. And surrounding in, in any sort of distance is just this giant wall of, of like this vortex of, of just snow and wind and maybe even like thunder and, and stuff in the clouds. But um, above, um, like right above where I'm at, is just a, a giant hole of, of clear blue sky. Right. And I think at that point you feel like Piccolo's hand on your shoulder from behind. Mm-hmm. And you hear, like, as as the wind kind of, like, you can finally hear what he's been saying to you. Yeah. Um, and because uh, you were calling out, like, I'm going to lose you. Like, yeah. I can't find you. And he's like, no, you won't. And you see his hand kind of um, work by you. And he kind of brushes on the stone um, that same symbol that he, which you might have seen him be using. Uh, the Veg Vizier, yeah. like carved into the stone right where this, uh, the eye of the storm is, the sunbreak. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll go up next, and uh, I'll go with taking shelter. So we've probably made it through the worst of the storm by now. We've progressed through the canyons a little bit. And the Megas has set up another uh, kind of cozy environment, this, but this time we've taken shelter in a cave instead of a posh tent. And he's kind of lined the walls with things that'll kind of make us a little bit more comfortable. Candlesticks, uh, some incense burners, and he's put some carpeting on the ground so it's not stone cold. And he's set up a few beds. And uh, we have something of a little fire going in the middle of the cave, and I step forward and I kind of just plunk down on the little stone that's been carved out for me right there. I turn to the Magus and uh, if someone wants to play the Magus. Eric? Yeah, I'll volunteer if no one else wants to. Yeah, you've been doing a good job. Okay. Um, and I, uh, I turn to the Magus who's kind of sitting off to my left by this point and I'm like, did I ever tell you the story of the Whispering Wood? Hmm. I've heard many tales of the Whispering Woods, but I do not think I've heard yours. I go. Mago kind of sits back with a, a wry smile on his face, and he's like, uh, It was many years ago, many years before any of these younglings were born. I think, um, I think the, the Magus will, um, like, get out his little pipe and, and usher everyone around to hear it. Yeah. Like, guys, come on. Uh, Piccolo, Fawn. River. Vago doesn't gather around. Gather around. Vago doesn't really need the attention, so he kind of just you know sits back and keeps going. He's, he'll just talk to whatever audience will listen. Um, sure. And he kind of leans back, and he, you know, if you want to picture this, he the camera kind of fades in over a little forest, and kind of little sprite-like things are darting between the trees. And Vago's speaking uh, in present tense, and he's like, "It was oh maybe a century ago, if I remember correctly." I had just left Barley Town on my first voyage, out of t out of home out of the homeland, and I had been returning when I happened upon a whispering wood. Now, 
This is probably the same Whispering Wood that you would have heard of in your own stories, but... Interestingly, it was at this point in time specifically, I believe it was in a midwinter day, that I happened upon a tree of a brilliant purple color. And I thought to myself, my, this is a fantastic tree. I do not believe anything else like this exists in the whole of Mistwood. And so I plucked a single leaf from that tree, and I have carried it with me since. But, as I did so, I remember hearing the voice of an odd childhood friend of mine who would only stop by on rare occasions and whom I had only seen once within the past century. And they whispered to me, and they said, and he kind of leans forward, I know what you did. And then he kind of leans back and the smile's kind of gone from his face, and he kind of uh, reaches his hand down and uh, moves his fingers over the the box in his pocket and he kind of takes a deep breath and he's like there have been darker things in my past that I wish not to reveal but I do hold a sense of reverence for that place and that tree and mm. if you should ever go there or if we should ever travel there on our quest know that I must visit this tree at least once more and he kind of stops I think that Magus is um it's like I've not heard of this of this tree before. Uh Vago kind of uh leans his head on his hand and he's like, I do not believe it is a tree that any have found before myself. It is something wholly untouched by time or human hand, as if the primal energies of the earth had blessed it long before at the dawn of creation. Mm. It was shaded in a misted grove, and I do not think, even if I were to try, I would find it easily. But we must make an attempt, should we venture back. Hmm. Yes. Uh, there's not that, uh, a magical, uh, font of power, um, are few and far between in this realm now. Um, perhaps it would be prudent if, uh, if we could spare the time. To, to journey to, to find uh, this tree. Uh, I'll end the scene there. Okay. Uh, I think I have an idea. Sure. So I'll, I'll also go into taking shelter. And so I can immediately me, connect me to... It's immediately connecting to when, like, like the this uh, there's a silence that falls after Vago tells a story, and everyone is thinking about like I don't know maybe what the tree could be, uh, and like it's purple or like what could these whispers be? Uh, River is thinking about what the fuck did Vago do? Like he seems so nice most yeah. of the time. Uh, but that river, like, blurts out, uh, like, it stole something in Stormguard. Vago kind of leans forward intently like he wants to hear. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think Fawn, um, just, she's probably resting on her, her backpack and her bedroll and stuff. Um, she just taps her bag to make sure things are where they are. Uh, and uh, she's like, uh, I, I tell you this because we, we could get in trouble and I don't want us to get in trouble. And then she like goes in her pocket and like pulls out this, this ring, which is like gold and it has like the flower leaves and in the middle is like a you know, good sized like a, a green gem, like a jade. Hmm. A lot, like way too rich for anything River could have afforded by the way she looks. Uh, and it's like, this is it. I stole it. And then, well, 
In Stormguard, they're not so nice, the thieves. They're not so nice to anyone. And then she puts it in her hand again, like awkwardly. Puts it back and is like, we should, we should like pass through quick. I don't want to, I didn't want to go to Stormguard, but. Hmm. And it kind of sounds. Okay. I think, um, I think Fawn, um, nods, but, um, it's unclear whether she's nodding in agreement, um, that we shouldn't go, or, <coughs> or just acknowledging the fact that, yes, the, um, the storm guards are, are very, very lawful, <laughs> and prosecute to the fullest extent of the law. I think the Magus would kind of, you know, turn to her and be like, but why would you steal that child? What reason did you have? We have all the wealth we need. I, I stole it before I came to you. And he kind of just sits I, back. I came to you because I stole it. And he kind of just sits back and keeps going on the pipe and he's like, ah, I see. I think... I didn't, I didn't steal anything pretty ever. I, I stole like bread and and meat and and that's it and and one day it, i got this before me and it was there and it would feed me for the rest of my life uh -huh. i think that piccolo would kind of would it, like you, I think River would realize that Piccolo is like staring intently at River, mm -hmm. uh, and he just says, "It would appear that though it wasn't the path that you wanted to take, that ring did indeed give you everything you needed." Let's hope I can keep everything I need. Like my head. <laughs> I think Fawn snorts. Here yeah, I, th I, I think even Piccolo, like, having learned from the Magus's, like... Composure. Yeah. yeah, like, over the years, even, like, chuckles at that. Like... <laughs> Alright. And, and, you know, this Probably. infuriates Riven to, like, no end. Like, this is, like, she could actually die, and these guys <laughs> laughing about it. So she, like, goes in the corner and, like, sulks and, like, crawls in her bed. Like, screw these guys. They're being dicks. <laughs> and that's it. Okay. Um. So then... Demo uh, Piccolo's yeah, scene? Demos needs to be on the... Yeah, Piccolo's scene. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with scouting ahead as well. Um, and I think this takes place like a little bit after um, the scene that Fawn had. Like, we've moved back into the storm. Okay. Um like to keep going to keep figure something out like we have like essentially a day um to, to scout ahead you know and it's only been we still have time um and i'm gonna roll a d6 roll a d6 <laughs> ambush okay um Okay, I think that, like, as we're going through, and, like, we, it's probably not soon after um, the, like, that, that scene where Piccolo's like, you're, you, you won't be lost, <laughs> and, like, things will be okay, that, um, like, we're wandering, like, through the snow, um... And a, like, a bunch of, like, very, 
like heavily clad, like armored men, like fur pouring out of their armor, and these great uh, glaives that they have, like um, just shout out, and we like we don't even see them at first. They just shout in this language that neither Fawn nor Piccolo understand. And they're just like, and we can't even tell where it's coming from. And I think Piccolo instinctively like puts his hand over so Fawn. We don't know the language. We don't know what the language is saying, but do we know the language itself? Yeah, I mean, I think it's... Um, Storm Guardian? Yeah, Storm Guardian. Okay. <laughs> Sure. Um, and like yeah Piccolo like reaches over like instinctively to put his hand like in front of Fawn to like stop um, yeah Fawn totally freezes and um, I think uh, instinctively she starts putting her hand to the hilt of her sword and I think like as Piccolo notices that like that might not be the wisest decision. But I think like, I think she says like I can take him. Like in a very like um boastful kind of way. Uh, <laughs> um But can you take all of them? And like uh, the the implication, and then, yeah, and I say all of them question mark, and is that when they show up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, it's like ten or so, like storm guardian guards, <laughs> or like you know um, military folk in full regalia of. Um, and uh they're like they they're not like um aggressive like they're not like pointing their glaives at us or anything like mostly they're just yelling at us in this weird germanic like language that we can't sure. understand yeah. um yeah and if you think that fawn would put this together i don't think piccolo actually would they're like what they're doing is they're essentially presenting themselves yeah um well i think i think fawn would get the idea and so she wouldn't have drawn her sword or anything like that because they're clearly not like trying to attack but we're also like outnumbered and there's no real point drawing your sword because that would just be as dying right right like we're, we may we may or may not die anyways but like so um I think I think Fawn mentions like shit. I wish I wish I were a new Storm Guard. <laughs> um, I, I I don't know what they're saying. Um, um, I think at that point, like they're they've like they've quit shouting at us. Yeah. And one of them like kind of breaks the formation and just like in like the wind and everything like this like is holding out like a a note. Mm -hmm. uh, does Fawn go to take it? Like, P Piccolo, oh. Piccolo is, like, still, like, protect mode. Like, he's just, like, what are you doing? Why are you handing a thing to this person? Yeah. I think I think Fawn cautiously grabs the note. What does the note say? Uh, it just says Magus on it. <laughs> oh, um, they nod, and, uh, I look to, um, I look to Piccolo, and I'm, like, uh, I can't. Do I say? I don't. I don't want to say ri her name. I. I don't want to say River's name. River is a girl, right? That's the right pronoun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. She's uh, a okay. Um, do we? We. We don't yet know that, do we? No, we do. Because uh, uh, like was... maybe. Yeah. She's. She's trying to hide it. Maybe you know. I'll leave it up to you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because oh, you're trying. She... tell. So. <laughs> the girls know. 
it's no, uh, it's left with an intuition. You have your woman radar. Like, oh, yeah, um, <laughs> what so? So Fawn, Fawn would look to Piccolo, and, and I think I think Fawn has a suspicion that um, that River is probably not to be trifled with with the storm guards and like that's she's starting putting the pieces together if not already blatantly just told and is, is looking to piccolo for guidance for for should we should we lead them to to the magus because if we do that means they get led to uh river i think like piccolo being insightful um like receives that you know like through nonverbal cues. <laughs> you a look oh, that says, "Hey man, <laughs> yeah. if you need him back there. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just it's said entirely in eye eye movement. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think Piccolo gives you a look that says, uh, <laughs> "No, but um, like." He kind of turns to face um, um, uh, sorry, Vaughn, and kind of just says, like, I will lead them back. And kind of gives, like, a little bit of a wink, but you can tell he's not practiced at it. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But, <laughs> but he kind of points you. Yeah, both of <laughs> Just back and forth blinking. Yeah, um, but he kind of is like pointing his head towards the direction you came, the the both of us came, like essentially take the shortcut that leads to through the eye of the storm. Like I'm gonna lead them back uh, another way. Oh, okay. Like basically, he's saying, "Go now." Yeah. I'll lead them back, and it'll take time. Yeah, I think I think I, I pick up on it, especially as we make the direction to the storm. I'm like, okay, okay, I'm gonna need. To- Okay, I know, I'm, and I, she's just, and Fawn's just uh, recollecting and like kind of doing the mental map of where the camp is. Being like, okay, if I can get there. I can get there. I can do this. Yeah, and I think this. I think I'll end the scene on Piccolo kind of looking at her with a yeah. like tiny bit of a smirk on his face and say, "I need you to run." Yeah. Okay. Um. Cool. So, do you want to do another scene here or move the magus? Um, I don't know. Yeah, because who's, yeah, whose turn is it? I think it's back to Eric. Oh, um, let's see. I will. Because the situation we're in is kind of a hard thing to resolve with any of the things. Options, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I can... Yep, I'm going to do it. I don't care. We're going to go to the Mistwood. Okay. Oh! Um, hounded by uh, Stormguard uh, troops, apparently um, in the interim, uh, Stormguard and their hospitality and, and Magus... Uh, for the Magus is not exactly all on the uh, on the same page. Um, Stormguard apparently seeks to capture and imprison the Magus uh, for some unknown ends, and uh, it's caused us to uh, double back bat through Stormguard um, down into the Mistwood. And so, what's slowing us down is that we have to uh, constantly not take the fastest paths, and um, keep uh keeping keeping storm guard kind of off our tail um while as we venture through the mistwood so um so the magus i think um i think we t- it's somewhere between the storm guard mountains and the mistwood um like near the blizzard and stuff uh maybe that's like just in the distance and uh the magus is like leave the wagon Bring what we can. We must make it to the Mistwood. Stormguard will not find us there. 
and uh, and so what do you guys do do you like at the mistwood or in that no like in, in, the, in, in, the, that, in, in that little scene like yeah are you guys scene. are you guys just grabbing your belongings yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'd grab the lion's share of everyone's stuff and just kind of throw <laughs> it over my shoulders very well start spreading yeah. down I would actually say that um, uh, Piccolo hasn't returned yet. Okay. Um, okay. So, so like, yeah, Vago has to grab Piccolo's stuff too. Sure. I mean, Fawn wants to know. Uh, I mean, it's gonna be weird to ask this question to the Magus because I'm also playing <laughs> the Magus. But, uh, you know, like, where's Piccolo? And um, the Magus will will reply. Um, it doesn't matter. He knows, like, he knows the way. He knows how to find me. Uh, we must go. Uh, time is of the essence. And, uh, he, he hurries off. He's like, come quick, quick. And so, uh, we scamper off into, uh, the mist woods. The, I imagine the mist woods to look something like, um, even though it's summer, uh, chilly, uh, swampy, um, sort of like Cascadian pines. And perpetually misty. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Perpetually misty. So. Right. Uh. <laughs> Ooh. All right, um, so I'm going to go to Trail of the Rangers. I'm just going to put myself off to the side. Um, so I imagine the Trail of the Rangers is probably a, uh, a trailblaze kind of footpath through what available area there is to walk through the Mistwood. So it's kind of just, you know, a bunch of underbrush that's been cut away, and there's some dirt paths here and there, and there's some fallen logs around the place, and a mm -hmm. few kind of, like, markers that indicate what direction you should turn so you stay on the path. Of course. Um... And so I'm, you know, we haven't set up camp yet. We're, I'm still carrying everything over my shoulders with flanked by the group. Um, and I happen upon a tree that appears to have uh, several scratches in it from some kind of large creature. And everywhere behind us and beyond this tree line uh, that I'm looking at directly, uh, the mist is still very thick. It's very, like, heavy in the air, and you can't, it's reduced... Uh, visibility to like near zero and then directly ahead of this the mist sort of seems to clear away and form a path forward uh, along the trail and uh, I kind of halt in my paces uh, for a second and the group stops behind me and um, the, ma the Magus turns to me and he says why have you stopped Vago and uh, Vago kind of just stares in stunned silence at the tree for a moment and he's like I remember when I made those marks and then he kind of like, and it, it doesn't make much sense. It sounds like babbling. And he kind of steps forward in a trance-like state very slowly um, and starts kind of just like sloughing stuff off as he moves, just like throwing stuff down in the stupor. And he reaches out and he puts three fingers along the tree and he runs his fingers down the marks that are carved into it. Um, and he kind of like just looks over the tree and feels down the marks uh, up and down for a few minutes or a few moments. And then he kind of peeks around the tree. And there's a faint singing noise coming from further down what is not a trail, but would be a trail uh, if you were to just go straight forward. And he sprints off down the trail. Um, sure, I think I think Fawn, um, maybe even the Magus are like, wait, Vargo, where are you going? Vargo doesn't stop to say anything. He just keeps sprinting off. Um, and he moves deeper and deeper into the Mistwood. I think Fawn... Um... Fawn curses under her breath, um, and uh, and chases after Vargo. And uh, as she gives chase, I think so does the Magus. Yeah. What do you, what's everyone else doing? Right. Sure. I mean, like if everyone is going, then sure. Uh, I think it should be up to Nick if we catch up to him or not. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, yeah. Um. So slowly as you guys start, you know, kind of closing the distance, you notice the visibility starts shrinking and going from, like, perfectly clear to 
slowly foggier and foggier and foggier until everything's basically a blanket of white and you can't see, like, your hands in front of your face. Um, and presumably every, the whole group stops at this point in the Magus, kind yeah. of looks back. And behind you, you can still see everything perfectly, but forward and uh, at any side uh, around you in, like, 100, 180 degree chronal vision, uh, you can't see anything. Like, not oh. even the trees. Okay. Um, and even as you call out Devago, it just his footsteps get further and further and further away until you can't hear anything. Is that the scene? Uh, if you guys want to continue any further, I left it open. Oh. I, I mean, it's kind of like just from your perspective as Vaco, right? I think we're, we're just kind of left in the midst of like, shit, now we're too down. Then yeah, we'll call it scene. Okay. Fog go running off. Okay. Jesus. <laughs> Alright. Who wants to do the uh, next scene? Um I mean I can do it. I I, I right. just... go for it, Robert. Okay. Just I mean I had an idea if anyone else wants to do though. I just went, so. Um, <clears throat> so I think I'm also going to go to the Trail of the Rangers with the Changing Mist. And I think we kind of flash back to the mountain pass with the blizzard. <clears throat> and you just see um, uh, Piccolo running for his life. Like, you've never seen Piccolo panicked or, like, true fear. And but it's there, um, and he's just been running, and you can tell like he's like worn down. This isn't like recent. This is this has been days of running and running, and he's like trying to lead these um, storm guardian uh, military like men through the most windy and treacherous paths possible, and like to give everyone else the time to, to get away. Mm -hmm. I think it's been a few days. Um, and he finally, like, looking behind him, he can't see any of the men, and he can hear them, but he can't see them, and he are hopes... They still, are they still cursing in their Germanics? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but he, awesome. hopes that, he hopes that they can't see him, and he kind of tucks away into, like, a crevice on the, on the cliffside, like, as deep as he can go. And he, um, uh, he, like, sees them marching and, um, like, they stop at the crevice and, um, like, they make camp, <laughs> like, right at the, at the edge of this, um, like, the place he's been hiding and he's just wedged in between the crevice, and all he's doing is just staring out into the white nothingness um, for what seems like forever, until finally the white nothingness, like, he feels like where he's been pressed, the pressure goes away, and the smell of pines, like, fills his uh, nose. And he finds himself in the mistwood. Like at like I think almost like directly after, like uh, River says, "Ah, now there's two gone." <laughs> like, uh, um, echoing through the forest. Yeah. Y yeah. Uh, Piccolo just Piccolo. Hilarious. Yeah, like wanders in, very like, looking like he's been traveling for days. Yeah. Oh, like and exhausted. Right. <clears throat> oh, awesome! Because I know what scene I want to do. I want to, um, camping, we're together, um, so we, we take Piccolo in, um, I, I take Piccolo up to, up to speed on how Vargo ran off chasing, uh, something, um, the Magus is currently communing to figure out how, what our next steps will be, um, now that the storm guards are, are looking for us. Um, in the meantime, here, uh, take this. You must be famished. And I hand you um, some sort of, like, barley bread. Uh, mm -hmm. 
and it, it's clearly um it's clearly like the end of a loaf right and <clears throat> and it's clearly like my my last um bread or like my last kind of like ration and i'm giving it to you and like i think piccolo like takes it and as he's as he's looking at it he gets a flash to um that first ritual he did where the barley was like frozen like just frozen solid and then melted yeah and he gets like a flash of that and and says so like I, I couldn't any like he goes to like break break some off of it for um for any every like anyone here like we all get a smaller amount but we'll need this we'll all need this I ask um I ask Piccolo um I I pose the question what if what if the storm guard come to Barley Town? looking for for looking for the magus will they be safe will my family be safe and um that might be the end of the scene yeah yeah i don't think yeah i don't think i have an answer for that no problem um totally um so what runs out is uh at food supply i would prefer i mean i can't i can't make the assumption that everyone else's foods ran out but i think um fawns is, is out sounds like hope ran out as well no there's always hope with them with the magus all right i have to be in here somewhere um crab singer so, so I suppose good. we go foraging. Sure. Uh, it's at your call, this man. point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we roll a d6. Because you, Eric, you did the exact thing that I wanted to do, by the way. Uh. <laughs> you just swooped in and like, oh shit. <laughs> I was gonna do that exact scene. <laughs> oh, <crap. laughs> All right, so um, we're foraging uh, in the woods. Um, we like we like tried to hunt for like an hour, and it was horrible. Like we didn't see anything except stuff running away from us because we were like not that sneaky, and yeah. then. We finally found something, and it's like, well, we don't have a bow, so we we have to like jump it with our swords, and that's not or gonna traps. work. So we like gave up on hunting, and we're just like looking for like berries and uh, foraging uh, juniper berries in the in the yeah, calls, and like like a mushroom, and it's like, y- you think these are edible? Like, my God, I don't know. Um. Vago would know he's if from I the can, woods. Um, yeah. If I can, I'll play the Magus for that. And I think the Magus is like, bring them here. Yeah. And I think he holds them in his hands. And like, he, he whatever berries and, and like seeds that you're able to find, he like puts in his hand. And um, they look like uh, like treats. They look like, like little like caramel chews and like candies um, mm-hmm. after he does it. And. Um, He's like here. Um, uh, they should, uh, they should give you strength for a full day. And uh, um, so River will will eat one, but like they look like candies, but they don't they don't taste like candies. No, they don't. They taste like cardboard. <laughs> they taste like cardboard. Like they they taste. Bad. And she, yeah. you, like you see it on on her face. It's like, yeah, no, like this isn't, this isn't really a thing. Are you sure you like did it right? Like she doesn't vocalize that, but she's looking at the magus. So like, are you sure you did that right? Because I think um I think the magus, I think the magus cuts you off, like almost 
magically you kind of almost lose your voice and I think the first time you see Magus the Magus sort of like break a little bit from composure and he's like do not question me again and like he goes back to like thinking and like figuring out what's going on and how to um, how to, like what our next steps will be um, all right and actually, I think the uh, the Magus might be like, in fact, nobody speaks to me until Fargo gets here. He is the key. Uh, and River is like, we're never seeing Vago again, Magus. And then, like, like I think, I, I think, like you, like Piccolo, like almost like, te- like you feel the hand slap across your mouth as he te- like puts you on the ground and is like tackling. Don't say it. <laughs> like, like, just like, and it's just like, you foolish child, do not. <laughs> you have no idea. Yeah, you fool of a toque. <laughs> <All right. laughs> totally. That's where the scene ends, I think. Um, I don't know. Is, does, I think does, I'm does wrong about Vago ever meeting up with oh, us again. I keep saying I Vargo, but something. it's it's Vago, right? Hey, yeah, I'm, I haven't bothered to correct you. Uh, maybe <laughs> the plot thread oh, continues. Well. Okay. I think it's good for a scene regardless. Yes. Um. Oh, you think? Oh. Oh. A vignette scene. Okay. I just want to do. Um. At night, um, around the campfire, um, feeling hungry, um, I I close my eyes as fawn and i think back at um returning our our trip returning to our into uh barley town and the tray and the um and i think that the the shrubs and and the trees sort of wave like kids holding the barley and that just makes my stomach rumble Mm. As there's no food to eat. Yeah. Eggs, and I look at that candy, and I look at my stomach, and I'm just like... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my little vignette. Okay. <clears throat> um. It's 11.06. Do you want to... Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, it is 11.06, which means we're pretty much on time for our, uh, second break of, of our, of our session of episode 13 of Once Upon a Game.